These are the assembly instructions for my disco ball. The assembly of my disco ball is very similar to the assembly of my Christmas ornament. I have eight identical pieces for the top and eight identical pieces for the bottom. These are the eight pieces for the top and I've already put on the holographic sparkle vinyl to decorate my disco ball. So I'm just going to decorate the last one. I'm folding down on all the score lines. So I've got the, the first score line, the second score line, and all these tiny little tabs. Once I've carefully folded those tiny tabs down, I lay my piece flat on my mat. I run my bone folder. You could use a ruler for this or your Cricut scraper tool. And I just run it along the edge just to smooth out the edge. So this is my blue holographic sparkle vinyl. So I've just weeded out the grid so that I'm left with the parts that I need. And then I can easily weed away and then cutting between the pieces. So each one of these goes onto the pieces that form my domes. So all of you that may have gotten a bright pad for Christmas, this is one of the things that I like to use it for. My craft mat is a dark color. I'm using a dark color and I'm gluing another dark color on top of it. So the white background from my bright pad really helps me see exactly where to place my vinyl. I have an extremely well used piece of transfer tape which I'm using to transfer my holographic sparkle vinyl to my cardstock. So I'm just placing my vinyl very, very close to that top peak and very close to the edge of my cardstock piece. In the file, I have four of these octagon pieces. I'm going to take one of them and I've split my dome pieces into two piles. I have one pile on the fourth row on the right hand side I have an almost full square. And in the other pile, on the fourth row, on the right hand side, I have just a little tiny sliver of a piece. As I'm assembling the dome, I want to alternate between the two different styles. And I'm going to draw from the first pile. I'm going to put glue on the bottom tab, so from the score line to the edge. And I'm going to take my octagon frame and I'm going to glue that bottom tab so that the score line on the tab is right against the outer edge of my octagon and the edge of my piece is right where my octagon changes direction on both sides. So next I'm alternating taking a piece from the other pile and I'm putting glue on along that same tab and I'm tucking it in right next to the piece that I've just adhered. And again I want the score line of my decorated piece to be right along the cut edge of my octagon frame and the edges of my piece at the tab are right at the corners of my octagon frame. So next I'm putting glue on that bottom tab that's between my two pieces and the four next side tabs like so. And then I'm tucking the tab behind the piece that's on my right. And those four tabs are being tucked behind the piece that's on my left like so. I'm just making sure that the cut line of my piece is right against the score line of those tabs. And then I'm putting glue on all those remaining tabs. Sometimes it's easier to apply the glue from the interior. And then I'm making sure that, that those two top pieces are even at that score line. I'm making sure that the edge of my piece is following the score line on my tab all the way up like so. And you can go in there and just sort of curve your piece a little. So I'm alternating, taking from my first pile again. I'm tucking it under the same way. These are the two pieces that I've just glued down. I'm putting glue on the tab that's on the right hand side of that second piece. And then I'm putting glue on the four first tabs at the bottom of the third piece that I've just glued in. I'm just gluing the bottom of that piece into place making sure that the edge of my piece is right along the score line of those four small tabs. I'm just putting glue on the remainder of those small tabs and then I'm tucking them into place, making sure that the top is nice and even like so. So I'm just gonna continue all the way around my shape, continuing to alternate between the two styles of pieces and gluing them into place the exact same way. So I'm down to the last panel for my dome. And I'm starting it the same way by putting glue on that bottom tab and I'm inserting it into place just as I've been doing all along. And I'm putting glue on the tab that's on the left of that piece and the tab that's on the right. 
and then glue on the four bottom tabs on the piece that I'm gluing in and the four bottom tabs of the piece that's to the right of it. And I'm just sliding everything into place and gluing it as I've been doing all along, but this time on both sides of the piece that I'm gluing in. So from the inside, I'm just putting glue on the remainder of those small tabs. So from the inside, I'm applying pressure and pinching those tabs so that they're exactly where they need to be. I want the tops to be nice and even. So this is the top dome of my disco ball. So now I'm taking this little piece that looks a little like a sun. So some of these are little triangles are hanging on by a little thread. You may have to pull them apart. I'm folding down on the eight sides that form that center octagon. And then I'm folding down on those outer score lines, those little trapezoid shapes around the perimeter. And I'm folding down on the triangular tabs that are on all eight sides. So now that I've folded down on all my score lines, I'm just going to decorate my piece. So I have some foil craft board that's a pretty good match to the holographic sparkle vinyl. The underside is brown, which makes the edges brown. So I've taken a Sharpie and I've just run my Sharpie along the edges to make them a little less noticeable against the black cardstock. So I have eight of these little tiny rectangles, hearing them between the score lines on the eight sides of my shape. So now that I've decorated my piece, I'm putting glue on those little side triangles. So from the score line to the edge of the triangle. And then I'm laying the cut edge of the piece beside it, right on the score line of my little triangular piece, like so. I'm going around my shape, and I'm doing this for all eight of them. What I've, so now that I've glued my piece together, I'm going to take this octagon piece that has a little slot in the center, and I've cut a similar shape out of foil craft board, and I'm just gluing it right on top, making sure that those center cutouts are on top of one another. And then I'm going to put glue on one of those trapezoid shapes and glue one of the straight edges of my octagon shape right at the score line of where I've just put that glue. And then I'm putting glue on the remaining trapezoid shapes and folding my piece down. So I want that top piece to follow along the edges of my trapezoid. And when I have them in position, I'm just going to go in there and just put a little bit of pressure from the inside to make sure that that glue takes. So next I have these two pieces. They're round pieces with little stems and I have the same in black, but these ones have score lines on them and I'm just folding on the score lines. I'm going to take one of those pieces, putting glue all over that piece, and I'm grabbing the matching piece and gluing those two pieces together. Kind of looks like a T. I'm putting glue on the back of the craft board pieces and matching them up and just gluing them to the top above that score line of the piece that I've just assembled. I'm doing that on both sides. I'm going to temporarily fold the black part so that those two flaps are together and insert it at the top of that octagon piece. And then I have this piece, kind of looks like a sun but with a cutout in the center of it. And I'm just going to fold down on those eight flaps. And then I have some holographic sparkle vinyl and I'm just going to apply it to the inside of my piece. Next I'm going to take my dome piece and I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put glue on all eight of those flaps that are on the perimeter of the piece that I've just decorated. And then I'm lowering it down into my dome shape and I'm going to flip it over just to make sure that I've positioned it properly. I want the flat edges of my decorated piece to coincide with the flat edges at the top of my panels. And then I'm going in there and I'm just applying pressure to spread that glue. So now I'm taking my top piece and I'm putting glue all along the perimeter of the bottom. And I'm inserting those little tabs at the bottom right into the cutouts that are on the top of my central piece. So now I'm just applying pressure to make sure that my glue takes. I'm putting glue on either side of those tab pieces, folding them flat against the top of my dome. 
This is really not necessary, but I decided to do it anyways. I have an octagon piece that's in, cut out of my cardstock. And I'm just going to glue it at the very bottom of my dome. And it's just covering up those flaps that I've just glued in. So next I have these lining pieces that are going to go in the interior of my box. So I have eight of them for the top and eight of them for the bottom. So I have some 80 pound Cricut card stock in pink. And I'm just inserting them right against that bottom lip of my dome. And I'm gluing them in so that they're right between the score lines. Then they cover up those little tiny tabs as well. I'm just going to glue in all eight of them the exact same way. So once I've decorated the interior, I'm just going to finish it off with a piece of foil craft board right at the bottom. Now that I've completed my top half, I'm going to repeat those exact same steps to form the bottom of my disco ball. So now that I've finished the bottom half, I'm just going to put in that bottom piece. So it's the piece that looks a little like a sun. So this one doesn't have a cutout in the center, so it's the bottom. I'm going to put glue on all eight of those flaps all around the perimeter and then I'm taking my bottom piece and I'm lowering that sun-shaped piece into the center of it. I'm going to flip my piece over and I just want to make sure that the straight edges of my piece correspond with the decorated flaps. Applying pressure to those flaps to make sure that they are properly adhered. And this is my second octagon that's cut out of foil craft board. And I'm just gluing it over that opening. And then just like I did for the other half, I'm just gluing in these panels. So next I have my third and final octagon and I'm just gluing that down the center of the bottom. So next I have my hinge piece. It has a score line in the middle and I'm just folding down on that score line. And then I'm looking at my top piece and I'm looking at the flat part of that top circle. This is going to be the front of my disco ball, so I'm going to put the hinge on the back of it. And I'm putting glue from the score line to the edge on one half of it. I'm gluing my hinge to that back panel. So I want the score line to be right against the edge of my piece. So my hinge piece fits nicely right between the edges of that panel. So I'm putting glue on the other half of my hinge piece, and I'm just gluing it to my bottom. So again, I want that piece to be right against the score line. I want that piece to be glued in right between the edges of that back panel. Got my disco ball open and I'm just pinching down, making sure that my hinge is nicely glued down. So next I have two more of those frame pieces and I'm just going to glue them on top of either half of my disco ball. So next I'm working on the platform that divides the two halves on the inside of my disco ball. So I've cut this piece out of black cardstock and it's got one score line for the hinge. Then I have my pieces for the Happy 2024. So the base is cut out of acetate and this is Cricut acetate. So I'm just taking the liner off both sides of the acetate. Both pieces have little tabs on the bottom. I'm just folding down on the score line for the tabs. And I'm putting red line tape on both sides of all four tabs. So my base here is white 80 pound cardstock and I have used glitter cardstock for the letters and the numbers. So I'm just putting red line tape on the underside of my happy and my 2024. So I've covered the back in red line tape and I'm just adhering my number to the acetate base. And I'm doing the same with happy. I'm starting with the back panel. It says happy. I'm inserting it into my base. It's also cut out of foil craft board. I'm taking a liner off the double sided tape on one side and making sure that it's nice and straight. I'm just folding down on my tabs. I'm doing the same thing with my number. So now I have mirror images of my number and my word. I put red line tape on them and cover up the back of my words. So from the back, you can't see the red line tape through the acetate. And then I'm taking the liner off the red line tape that's on my tabs. And then I'm putting glue all along the bottom of my platform. I have that tab of the semicircle towards me. And I'm just slipping the front of my platform. I'm maintaining even border all the way around. 
I'm opening up my disco ball. I'm putting glue from the score line to the end on the tab that's at the back. I'm placing my little platform so that it's centered. So it's more or less an even border around the perimeter. And then I'm opening it up and then applying a little bit of pressure just to make sure that that glue takes. For this version, I've assembled my pieces exactly the same way, but without decorating them first. I'm taking these tiny pieces of foil cardstock, adhering them to the facets of my disco ball. So this is not only labor intensive, but very time consuming. I'm putting glue on the underside of my cardstock and I'm adhering each one of these squares one by one to the surface of my disco ball. And as I go along, I apply pressure from the inside and from the outside and just sort of shape my pieces onto the curvature of my dome. The top points of my squares are touching. I'm just gluing them around the perimeter. So I've glued down my first round. I use a piece of scrap paper. I place my scrap paper so the bottom of it is at the bottom of my dome. And I place my square piece where it is touching the previous layer and then I put a little tick mark right at the bottom of that piece and then I place my scrap paper on every panel making a tick mark approximately the center of each one of these eight panels and all that does is keep everything level as you're working around because it's easy very easy to go off course so it helps me with placement, making sure that everything's nice and level. So I'm just going to work my way around, gluing down the next level. And so now I've finished the second row, and I'm just going to use my scrap paper again and do the same thing. So I'm dry fitting one of my squares underneath the previous layer. And then I'm going to make a little tick mark, making sure that the bottom of my scrap paper is at the bottom of my dome so that I don't choose the wrong one. I'll snip it off. Mark it again just as I did previously. I'm just continuing along doing the exact same thing for my third layer. So I'm down to the last one here and it's just a little bit too big to fit so I'm just going to snip it off just by a little bit. So this is definitely one of those projects that you kind of figure it out as you go. I've worked my way down to the border row so I've cut some larger squares for that border row and I'm just continuing along adding the larger squares as I've been doing all along. So now I'm just completing my dome by gluing on my octagon and then the rest of my project gets assembled the exact same way as the other one.